Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Well, first of all, I want to thank the Southern Arizona Unity Coalition for putting on this event. And I want to congratulate the, the people who are going to receive awards. In particular, I want to thank the teachers who are standing up for our community and our children. And more importantly, they're standing up for our history. And I want to thank them very profusely for that. But also, I think that I think that we have to put things in perspective. I've got to. Uh, one of the things that, that this uh, nasty, nasty bill, 2021 said, at the very beginning, is that we, our, our history is un American. That our kids are being taught to over, that our history is one of overthrowing the government. Now, we have to put that in perspective. How can teaching our children about the glorious military history of our people, about the fact that our people have shed their blood in every single war that this country has ever fought, under our flag, on behalf of our country, and irrigated Many battlefields with their blood. The fact that we, our community, has earned more, more medals of valor than any other group in this country. How the hell is that a patriotic? <clears throat> and being said by people who are at their rallies speak under the Confederate flag was an outright flag of treason, outright flag of people who denounced their U.S. citizenship, fought against this country, tried to destroy it, the very essence of treason. Yet they call themselves patriots, and they call us unpatriotic. That is wrong people. And we have to put that in perspective. We have to start talking to these people that we are the patriots, anybody, Anybody who marches under the Confederate flag is out by traitor. And we have to remind them. And how can, how can, how can teaching our kids about the Asociación de Madres y Esposas, who during World War II went around organizing victory gardens so our troops, so our government would be able to send food to our troops. So we had to, we, we, we grew our own. They went around organizing victory gardens. And they went around in the alleys and in the empty lots, pepinando scrap iron, and selling their silverware. So they could contribute to the work instead of war bonds. How is that a patriotic? How does that foster overthrow the government? That is wrong that they're doing. How can they call the fact that Mexicanos, our community, introduced ranching and mining techniques that made our country, our, our state great? See, we have to start with these, we have to start telling people that we are the patriotics, <coughs> not they. We are the ones who built the state, not they. Hate, hate did not build the state. Hate did not build a state. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's... Shelley hit it on the nail when she said that one of the reasons, a major reason, probably the underlying reason, is that the ideology of Russell Pierce Tom Horn, and for that matter, the entire Republican Party here in the state, and he's still in power. It's not only one of hate, it's an ideology of hate, but it's also an ideology of fear. No tienen miedo, for the very reasons that Sally said. They read census statistics as well as we do. But I think one of the reasons, one of the reasons 
that they're so against our teaching our history to our kids is because when you learn our history, when our young people learn the history that I just mentioned, and that's just a little, tiny little tidbit of our history, but when our children learn, they're infused, they're overtaken with pride. Un orgullo, pero tremendo, que les entra en el corazón y en el espíritu. And that scares the hell out of our superiors. Because proud, proud students become engaged citizens. They go out and they organize, they vote, and they run for office. And that scares the hell out of our superiors. And also, Chicano studies, Mexican American studies, brings people together. We sit in this room. I taught Chicano studies for many years at the university, for 20 years. And in all my classes, every single one of my classes, there was never a class that I taught that had only Chicanos in it. The wrong mix. There were white folks in there, there were black folks in there, there were American folks, Asian folks, all kinds of folks. As a matter of fact, one year, I had two people from Australia in my classes, from Aber Aboriginal tribes. And without exception, without exception, these people who were in my class who were not Mexican told me how being in my class, in my classes, and, and the classes of my other colleagues at the university, open their eyes, open their hearts, open their minds to other people. And they started working with us supporting our efforts, and that scares me. Because Russell Pierre and those people would keep us divided. They would keep us divided from our black brethren, Asian, Native American brethren, white brethren, Jewish brethren, and everybody else. But we see here today that that's not happening. Notice that he actually brings people together, and that scares Russell Pierre and those people. Um, you know, some people have um, have told me that they're kind of uh, upset with a lawsuit that's going on. Not because they don't want to support it, but they have this notion, and it's kind of a true notion, they have this notion that the law is a terrible thing to use in a political fight. Because the law is so slow, it takes years to litigate an issue. And it's expensive. Lawsuits are very expensive and it takes a long time to litigate something. And that's true, I mean, that part is true. Pero, pero, the law, lawsuits, are extremely useful and helpful. I'll give just a couple of examples. Just this month, President Obama conferred the Presidential Medal of Honor, Medal of Freedom, to Cida Mendes. Anybody know who Cida Mendes is? Cida Mendes, was a named plaintiff in the 1948 lawsuit in California, Mendez versus Westminster. And it was that case that for the first time, the first time in American history, established the fact that separate but equal in education was unconstitutional. And the very famous 1954 Brown versus, Brown versus Board of Education case actually used the Mendez case as its basis. And we all know what that's done. That changed fundamentally, changed the whole dynamic of education. And just more recently in Tucson, 1974, the Fisher Mendoza lawsuit changed fundamentally how education is done in Arizona, in Tucson.